This is our bi-monthly speaker series called Durango Diaries. Tonight is our eighth presentation called Tales of Immigration. Cameron Afso, the chief of the Durango Police Department, he came to the United States from Karachi, Pakistan in 1982 at the age of 15. At the time he had never seen snow and English was a second language. Uh, he studied economics before pursuing a career in law enforcement. His biggest immigration of all was to Durango. <laughs> Story st started a long, long time ago. Um, my uncle is the one that came to the United States in 1970, and he's the one that sponsored us, our, all of his siblings. So he's one of six brothers and sisters. My mom's the oldest of the family. So he became a citizen in 1975 and decided that he was going to sponsor his siblings and his mom to come down here. I was born in 1966, but I kind of grew up. What are, my recollections are more in the 1970s in Pakistan and then coming here in the 1980s. So U.S. was always seen as a shining bright light. Um, you know, that didn't really matter who you were or what you are, you can succeed here. Um, the Pakistan, that, that place um, where I'm originally from, the, the Indian subcontinent, uh, ruled by the British. So there's, uh, we definitely, one of the things after we kicked them out, and yes, we did kick them out, sorry British, um, is we kept this uh, uh, concept of royalty. So your status means everything to you. So if your father was someone, you're someone, and you could be a total loser, it doesn't really matter. If your father was someone, you're someone, and what you do yourself means very little. Now, I was very fortunate. Um, growing up, my dad was a naval officer. My, uh, his uh, eldest brother was the first foreign minister of Pakistan, so we came from a little bit of uh, status, but we're, we were still, we still uh, thought of the United States as that you know, shining bright light, anybody can succeed. I think it was probably, I was seven or seventh or eighth grade when my mom told me that, hey, Uncle Khaled, who's here in, in uh, Virginia, still around, has sponsored us. Didn't think much about it. And then in 1981, I think end of 1981, uh, we were told that, hey, our, everything came through. It's just we have next three years to make entry into the country. And uh, so mom, <clears throat> mom decided that in 1982, in April, that she and I were going to come here. Uh, because I was a little bit of a knucklehead uh, growing up in Pakistan. I was into sports, cricket, if anybody knows cricket, and field hockey, and that was about it, not in studies. So we, say, you know, we decided that, or she decided, that you are going to go and live with uh, uncle and aunt, and none of the sports are going to be here, uh, so you can just concentrate. And probably the best thing that happened to me was coming here and uh, being on my own. I told Shane a story that I think it was more of a culture shock coming to uh, Durango than it was to coming to uh, Washington, D.C. area. Because I, I grew up in Karachi, which is, I don't know, 20 million people. So uh, co coming to the Washington, D.C. area really wasn't that big a deal. It was urban area, um, you know, a little bit different culture, obviously. Spoke English because uh, being, a, being a British colony, all the textbooks were in English. Uh, thought in a different language. Uh, but my memories of when I first got here are very, very pleasant. It was a new life, a uh, new beginning. I missed my mom and dad for five minutes, and then I was a 15-year-old. <laughs> got, got friends, got into baseball, because that was the sport uh, similar to cricket. Uh, but being here by myself, definitely got into studies a whole lot more than I did in, in uh, growing up in, in that environment that I was in. And in 1984, the rest of the family came ex other than my dad. My dad was a naval officer, retired, and joined an uh, airline um, as sports management. And he had a contract that he couldn't leave until 1987. So he came in 1987. Came here for, um, I, I had finished my 10th grade education. So high schooling in, under that system, and the British system is up to 10th grade, and then you go to college. Well, I was attending college, but there's, you only get one exam for your grades. Um, and that's, that's your grade. You know, you, there's no, where you are, uh, you have, uh, Class, you have classes all the year round, but you have exams at the board level. So somebody at the province level comes up with the testing, and that's the only thing that counts. Nothing that you have done in the year counts. When I came here, all everything counted. So I was like, this is easy. So I actually found the educational system a lot easier. Things that I was doing in eighth grade in math and science, I was doing in 11th and 12th grade here. Um, so you know, it, it was. I'm not saying it was easy, but it was definitely a lot easier than what, what, what I had in Pakistan. Decided that I wanted to be an engineer, 
and then found, then found math, uh, calculus. I'm like, nope, that's not going to happen. And then thought I was going to be a banker. So my focus was trying to be a banker, uh, did business and economics, and uh, couldn't find a job. Graduated from college in uh, 89, end of 89, and couldn't find a job. You know, the time was a little difficult at that time. I happened to see an ad for being a police officer, uh, and that got my interest. It was Prince William County Police Department. Those idiots didn't hire me. Um, they're, <laughs> they're lost. But I got, eventually got hired by U.S. Capitol Police, uh, spent some time there for about a year and a half, uh, realized that that wasn't the path because it was very security oriented, and then Arlington County PD hired me in 1993. And probably the best thing that I ever did was get into this life because that spoke to me. Uh, when I got hired by, uh, by U.S. Capitol Police, I was so proud. I told my dad, first one, and he said, what are you talking about? Your great-grandfather was a cop in Afghanistan. I'm like, really? Yeah, because so my family moved from Afghanistan to what is now India. My grandfather was born in India, and he was a police officer in British India, uh, for British police. My dad then became a naval officer, so he goes, why are you shocked that you like this field? This is what we have done. We, have, we serve our communities. So it's my blood. So my, my son now is also studying to be in criminal justice. In Arlington, I was very, very fortunate. I, I had a lot of great experiences. I progressed very quickly and made command staff captain level in about 12 years. And then I was fortunate to do special operations, uh, community policing, oversaw schools. Um, very proud of the fact that I was the planner for Virginia for uh, President Obama's first inauguration, the security plan. Me, along with uh, another uh, a captain from Virginia State Police, uh, Tracy Rosilla, who is the second in command for Virginia State Police now. In 2014 time frame, decided that, you know what, at some point I want to be, want to be chief of police. I think I have that in me. Uh, when this job opened up, I got to know the people who were actually running the process, and um, they told me about Durango. I'm like, Durango, I'm not sure about that. This is a, a little itty bitty place. I'm used to large metropolitan areas, and I, I put in for the last possible day, and I was very, very fortunate, came here and, and got the job, and it's been a very good ride. It's been a year. There's, uh, you know, my experiences are very, very different from others, but that's the unique thing about our country that uh, we all are, un unless you're a Native American, I mean, all of us are immigrants at one time or the other, whether it's, you know, uh, like me, or four generations, five generations ago. So I don't necessarily think that my experiences are any unique. Law enforcement has been a calling for me. It's all about service as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and that's the message that was taught to me. And that's what I teach to, and it, it is teaching to, to uh, the officers that work with me um, and just keep pushing the idea that we're here to serve you and not for you the other, words, uh, other way around. And that's, maybe that's something that I took from seeing how police operated in Pakistan where you can definitely, um, if you want to uh, make somebody disappear, you can. And uh, the, the core democratic values that we have of our society where I'm answerable at all times to someone really speaks volume to me.